episode 145. I am your host Keith Andrew and you're here with a good friend of mine Jason and no disrespect how do, how do you pronounce your last name? Agalka, G-A-L-K-A. <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect. No, I'm taken. Usually when I type someone's name in, you know, it text and speech, I type it in and it's yeah, it tells me, but this one, it's, it's, it couldn't pronounce it, so it's kind of like, okay. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Jason G, let us call you Jason G, is a special sure. guest of mine, episode 45. And the whole point of Uncensored is to show people that even if we weren't in disability, I can still overcome controversy mm -hmm. and reach my goals in life. At the same time, able to turn myself into a perfect example for people out there deaf, blind, or in a wheelchair. But you should never label yourself or have people label you. And you should prove to them you can still mount to something no matter what. Absolutely. Good for you. Congratulations yep. on this. Yeah, I appreciate it. And um, with that being said, half hour, 45 minute conversation. You can say anything you want to curse if you don't want to. Curse if you want to, you know. Okay. <laughs> so starting off, what can you tell me about yourself? Um, well, I recently just turned 31, um, so I'm over that 30 milestone now. I grew up on Long Island, actually, and I'm, I'm currently working in New York now as a talk show host. Kind of a lifelong dream. Um, since I could remember, I always wanted to be in the entertainment business, and I had the opportunity several years ago, and it's just, you know, been an incredible journey since. Well, it's kind of funny you should mention the talk show host. Um, do you want me to mention it on the air or off the air? Well, I do have a request for you, but it's completely up to you. Sure. Well, actually, I'm in the process of launching a new show, actually. Um, it's going to be a whole lifestyle-themed show. We're going to talk about relationships and, and health and beauty, sex. Everybody wants to know about that. <laughs> and also um, fitness and, and healthy living, because I think that's something that there's something for everybody in that. And everybody can always use tips and advice on, on those topics, especially especially sex, let's be honest. <laughs> That's true. Well, off the air, I do have a couple of questions for you, so let's just save it until then. And it's funny you should mention sex, and it's because I read recently, well, I actually, I, I, I don't read, but I looked it up, I was skidding through it, the parts that I was able to read. <laughs> and it was basically, the whole point of it was, uh, they're saying sex, you should have sex. Because it's healthy, one, it's healthy for you. Yes. And. Ways. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, it's enjoyable, <laughs> enjoyable, number one. And recently, it said it's healthy for you. And in the article, also, if I look it up again, I can probably find you, but it probably. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean, because um, I do relationship advising as well, so I'm familiar with all of that. And it is actually healthier, especially for men, because it actually cuts your prostate, your chances of having prostate cancer, not in half, but very close. I think the statistic number was like 35%. Um, and of course, you know, that it's, it's just very invigorating, as you said, but more so healthy because it also increases your heart rate, you're burning some calories, so it sounds like a really great cardio workout, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Now, you mentioned you're a talk show host, so what's your show about? Uh, the current show I'm hosting is actually about relationships, and every week I'm giving advice to men and women. I answer their questions, I'm giving tips, I'm telling them what works, what doesn't work. I'm answering their questions on air. Um, prior to that, I was hosting, and it's a seasonal show, every summer I do a show about the Hamptons, the famous Hamptons of Long Island, that the Kardashians visit, and and numerous other celebrities over the years. And I just, I'm out there on the red carpets and I'm just interviewing these guests and these celebrities about what their charity is about and, and what the cause is about for tonight and, and what they're doing to make a difference, really. So it, it's interesting, I think, to the public to see what goes on in the Hamptons. You know, that they're never out there as often, or they never get to these really cool parties. Now, what influence do to get into this area of work? I was influenced by a lot of my own favorite celebrities, actually. Uh, I grew up watching the daytime shows, so I, I knew Ricky and Sally and Jenny. And for me, it was really interesting how each host had their own take on the show and how they did the show and, and hosted it. 
so it was just very fascinating to me. And as I got older and, and was still watching them, what was more fascinating was that, you know, this is a job. You know, people will pay you money to, to get the gossip. Back then it was more gossip than, than lifestyle. Now it's more lifestyle. But it was just fascinating to me on how these hosts did this show. And it was something that I always wanted to try, given the chance. All right. And now in the next question, I'm looking at your profile. You said you used to, or still, host live events. So what live events have you hosted? I'm a very big breast cancer um, fundraiser supporter. Um, I've known many women, unfortunately, as many people have, that have been affected by breast cancer. Some have lost the battle, some have won. It's just something that's very important to me. So I'm always hosting breast cancer research events. They're very important to me, as I said, and to many other women. Um, you know, I like everybody, we want to find a cure. So that's the main type of events that I've hosted. But I've also hosted film festivals, and I've introduced celebrities and, you know, presented them with awards. So it's it's a very amazing opportunity. No, yeah, it's very interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. I mean, it's sometimes I still have a hard time, like, wrapping my head around it all, but... You know, when you can live your dream, I mean, that's what I'm all about. It's like, you know, you can start anywhere from the ground up. You just have to have the drive to do it and follow through. That's true. And now the two questions I'm going to ask you. The first one is, uh, what big name stars have you interviewed? And okay. the second one is, do you do one-on-one -on -one interviews? Because you mentioned you do relationship interviews. But say, hypothetically, if I was a guest on your show, would I qualify or because I'm not in a relationship, I wouldn't qualify. Not at all. We, we've done shows with single guys and gals that were looking for love, and online dating wasn't working for them. The little apps on your phone wasn't working for them. They're not bar people. They're not club people. So our suggestion was to these panel of singles was to sign up with a matchmaker who can, you know, you tell them what you're looking for, let them find it in their inventory, and we've had several success stories. So no, you don't need to be in a relationship to be a guest. We can totally help you get into a relationship. Well, if you're up for it, I would love to be a guest on your talk show. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> we're in New York. <laughs> well, same for me too. I'm on, we're in the same area called. Okay. We're in New York, or do you hail from? Originally, Eastern Long Island. What about now? Now I'm in between. I, we still have our place on Long Island. We also have a place in the city as well. So. Have you ever been to uh, West Point, New York, or Woodbury Commons, New York? Woodbury Commons, yeah. Really great place. Um, my favorite place is probably Montauk at the very end of Long Island. It's, it's, I'm a very big beach person, especially in the summer, so it's... It's a good time to kick back and relax. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're interested, maybe we can hang out one day. Sure, absolutely. My grandparents uh, used to live, uh, they passed away, but they used to live in Seaford. Uh -huh. And my parents had, I was born and raised on Long Island, now in Orange County, New York. Okay. Um, but they used to live in Massapequa. Okay, I'm familiar with the area, yeah. Wow, such a small world, right? <laughs> Somebody that's, you know, grew up in your own backyard. <laughs> that's true. I know things work out. Now, for the second question, what big name stars have you had on your show? And also, you mentioned you help people get in relationships, but actually that's another subject we can get to in a couple of minutes. But what stars have you worked with? I've worked with Mark Ruffalo, uh, who's actually very big and upcoming now. I mean, I remember him in 13 going on 30 when, when he was still not new to the acting world because every, you know, he's been in the business, but certainly his name is much bigger now than it was back then, I believe. And he's just such an awesome guy. And we actually worked together on The Normal Heart, which premiered on HBO last May. So to see him over the summer this year at the film festival and get a couple of words with him, it, it was cool to talk to him as like a person one-on-one. -on -one. Um, Susan Lucci is another big name that I've interviewed. Um, she's very big into charity. Also, she hosted the Bay Street Gala several years ago, which is in the Hamptons. And, you know, she's a very big support in, supporter in the arts, of course. And let's see, um, the list goes on. Kelly Rutherford, Ricky Lake, Andy Cohen, 
um, Christy Brinkley, Brendan Fraser. So a lot of big names, a lot of people I grew up watching, and very, very cool experiences. You know, I've never encountered a nasty celebrity yet. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm I'm jealous. You know, I know I'm just starting out, but you got a lot of big names. Yeah, well, yeah, we all start someplace. I mean, I started just interviewing regular people, everyday people that had something. I started my show because I wanted to feature inspirational type people, and and for the audience to walk away with something at the end of the show. And it just kind of progressed to all this, where you know. People were asking me if you can cover red carpet, if you can interview my client who happens to be Karen Gravano or Susan Lucci, you know, like bigger names. And it was, yeah, I mean, of course. So, you know, everybody <laughs> starts someplace and like you don't know where you'll be in a year from now. You might be bigger than this a year from now. You know, you just never know what happens. That's true. No, um, what a big name. I would say they want to be A-listers. They'll probably be like... I don't know, if you want to link, link, label, I guess it would be B and C's. Um, but I would say I interviewed people, are you a fan of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Uh-huh. I interviewed um, Kerrigan Mayhem. Uh, I interviewed um, Barbara Goodson. I interviewed Ron Reisman. Very cool. Um, from Dragon Ball Z, I interviewed Eric Vale. Um, Kyle Herbert, and those were all in my demo interviews, uh, uh -huh. but from those demo interviews, I got the chance to redo the interviews, but I'm good friends with Kurgan Mayhem and Ron Reisman. Very cool. And, um, <laughs> and recently, I interviewed, um, Lenny Pablo, he's a good friend of mine, he's the brother of Macho Man Randy Savage. But I was talking to this agent, and it's like, oh, you work with a lot of former wrestlers. And I know most of them want to be paid, you know. Because right. I tried working with her a couple years ago, and she's like, oh, it's got to be 1200 it's got to be 2500 And now we're, I want some time passing, we're just trying to, you know, water under the bridge, just try again. Right. But, you know, like, still, they need to be paid for their time, but... She asked me, um, what type of uh, big-name stars that have. It's like, I don't know, you? Kerrigan, <laughs> Kerrigan Mayhem? Uh, you know, what big stars do you have? I don't know. I don't know how to approach I don't know how to even answer that. I, um, recently reached out to, um, and if I'm talking too much, I apologize. No, it's fine. <laughs> I recently reached out to, um, the guy from Hawaii Five O, okay. um, Chen Ho. Yeah. I also reached out to two guy, a guy and a girl from Grimm, uh, Monroe and Adelin. and I'm just you know, knock on wood. I I really hope they say yes. I I don't see why they would say no. I don't want to be paid for their time, but I really don't see why that would be an issue. I mean, the only, you know, big problem is conflicting schedules. You know, in this line of work, it's it's constant moving, constant on the go, and it's it's very it's very hectic, you know, as I'm sure most of them can admit to as well. That's true. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is, on social media, are you a social media bug? or um, <laughs> not? I'm actually more of a Twitter bug now. Now, seriously, um... I started with Facebook, which I still have, and I still love it for the purpose that it serves, um, you know, sharing things with my friends and my fans, because I also have a fan page. Um, I still love doing that, but I recently really, really got into Twitter, and I absolutely love it, and my following goes up dozens by the day, which is awesome for me, and, you know, it's fun to tweet and, and hashtag and then you get all this response to it. So that's actually my latest obsession is Twitter. So I'm always tweeting advice. So follow me on Twitter and I'll give you free relationship advice. Now for people who want to follow you on Twitter and Facebook, what is your, well we're doing a plug for it, so it's might as well plug it. Yeah, well my, thank you. My uh, my Twitter is at Jason Galka, J-A-S-O-N-G-A-L-K-A. -A. 
And my Facebook is facebook.com backslash the Jason Galka show. But that's my fan page, so you can find me there. <laughs> what about LinkedIn? Are you like a big fan? Of, and it's funny we should mention LinkedIn, but are you a fan of it or not as much? No, I actually really like it. It's a way to really connect with people that are in your line of work, something that I don't think that Facebook or Twitter could really offer you as easily as LinkedIn. Um, you know, you can still find anybody on Facebook as long as they have one, but um, I think LinkedIn is a great way for people of all industries to get in touch with one another and offer each other opportunities or share thoughts and ideas. And, you know, it, it's great for this line of work. It really is. Now, do you know any other big um, websites? You know, recently there's up. I tried something like, uh, what was it, Instagram and Pinsir. Uh -huh. Do you think those are good, or do you think that stick with Twitter and Facebook? Twitter and Facebook works the best for what I do. Um, I I don't know a lot about Pinterest, honestly. I'm very terrible with it. I have one, but I, I don't understand it, and that's that's just me. Instagram, I'm taking a liking to because I like to post a lot of inspirational quotes. I like to post a lot of photos of myself, my family, and, you know, so it's great for that thing, too. So, no, I think they're great platforms. I mean, anything that can get your word out and tell your story, I think is phenomenal. Now, while on the uh, subject, uh, how many followers do you have on Twitter, and how did you create your own fan base? A lot of people ask me, why don't I have a fan base? Well, you're more of a professional than I am. <laughs> Do you have any tips of how you created your own fan base or how so one would go about that? Well, my Twitter, I, I just broke 5,100 followers the other day. And, and for some people that have bigger numbers than that, let me explain. I just got into Twitter like several months ago. I've had it for years, probably since it came out. Never really used it because I haven't been doing this for that long. But just recently over the summer, I started really pursuing it and tweeting hard and, and putting out advice and doing what I do best and just hashtagging. And, you know, that's, that's what started to build it. So I'm very proud of myself and my 5,100 followers, and I thank every single one of them. Um, as far as starting up a fan base, for me, it was just word of mouth a lot. I, um, you know, I was using Facebook a lot more than getting the word out. And... With a fan page, I think it's easier to get the word out, too, and also, but these are great platforms just to get yourself launched and get yourself out there and, and say to people, hey, here I am, you know, check me out. Now, for when you were on the red carpet, who offered you to spot? Like, you mentioned you started out like me, but how did... What would your advice be for me to be where you are? Well, I started, I got kind of lucky also. Um, I started my original talk show, The Jason Show, three years ago. I, I landed that gig. And that was just a show idea and a show pitch. And then the opportunity had presented itself. It was like the right place at the right time kind of thing. From there, it was just, I've always worked on my skills as an interviewer. I, I work with a phenomenal coach that helps me. I've done study on my own, case studies as we call them. You know, I took people that inspired me and I just watched their way of doing it. Um, so that's kind of how I did it. As far as the red carpets and things come about, that was, you know, PR people that are hosting events and, you know, by that time my name was already out there. I had several magazine articles out there, some newspapers. So my name was out there, so it was very easy to get in touch with me, and that's pretty much how it happened. So it just, you know, we're just snowballs and snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and now do you have any, like I said, it's a normal comp season. You can ask me anything. Do you have any questions you want to ask me, or is there any subjects you want to talk about? Well, who inspired you to get into hosting? Um, that's a very good question. Um, and that's, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, I guess you really want to think about it. I was a big fan of the WWF and uh, WWE. And I grew up watching people like Bobby the Brain Heaton and Gorilla, Mon Gorilla Monsoon and Tony Savani and Eric Bischoff. And it's like, 
Oh, it's Tuss talking. I know how to talk. I don't know how to have a conversation. <laughs> Supposedly, people say I can't help hold a conversation if my life depended on it. But, you know, I I like talking and I just, you know, yeah, vague. For real. <laughs> What's that away, right? <laughs> That's true. And I did have my own high school radio show, the Keith Andrew Power Hour. And um, I guess it was just those two things combined that actually how it started. Actually, I think it started more with a talk show, but I think it was because, you know, I mentioned the four people who I grew up watching, but actually having someone who influenced me, I don't think there was anyone. Okay. Well, no, great for you. Congratulations. What about you? You mentioned, um, I don't mean uh, repeat myself, but who were like the big stars who influenced you that I know there's a lot of them, but who's the one that stands out the most? I would say Ricky Lake, <laughs> hands down. You know, she, she was, for me, the talk show of the 90s. She, I mean, it was always Oprah for the 90s. You know, when you got a call from Oprah, it was like, oh, my God. So, um, so technically, it probably went Oprah, then Ricky. But for me, it was always her because she just had such a unique way about her and, and her show and she was entertaining, and she was sympathetic, and she was just she just had such great qualities that she was somebody that one day I would just love to know her, and luckily I do, which is great. And she's everything I'd ever thought she would be. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool story. <laughs> now, with actually, it's funny to mention stories. Do you have any funny stories that you like to you know, share, or do you have any? Uh, Pranks that you pulled on your friends and family? I was never really a good prankster, really. <laughs> um, as far as good stories, there was a time we were filming the show, and a piece of the set had come down. You know, it was a, the set was a panel of windows, and it was one of the fake windows that actually came apart from the set as we were filming, and like right in deep conversation. And I remember it was a very serious show. It was it was a show about a family that had lost their son, actually, and. I'm not laughing because of that. I'm laughing because of, like, of all shows. Like, that is when the set decides to get away and, like, you know, basically scare the crap out of everybody. So, it, that's probably... It was a funny story, but not so funny because it was a very sad topic. But definitely only something that would probably happen to me. <laughs> well, was it a true story or was it just a story? No, it was a true story. It was a true story, and... and they were raising awareness for the disease that he had passed away from because it was very rare. It was like really like two people in X amount of years that could get it. So it was it was a very powerful show. You know, Del, the least. it's kind of really funny we should be on the subject. Um, but, you know, um, do you believe in a life after death? And do you believe in John Edwards? I do. I do. I believe in all of that. I'm, I'm very... I'm very spiritual, and I, I always know the presence of, like, my grandparents because they were always very close with me. So it's like I know when they're around, and, you know, I talk to them all the time also. <laughs> so I'm a very big believer. You know, the two parts I was got mentioned. The first one is how you know it wasn't the son who wanted to play a trick on you guys. You mentioned yeah. the window fell down by itself, so... If it's a real story, then I guess he was one wanting to pull a prank. Yeah, this is true. And uh, the other question, uh, uh, the other statement I was going to say, um, I was close to my grandparents too, and occasionally, you know, a light flickers, and um, usually that scares the shit out of me. <laughs> but I used to get, occasionally I get like this strong scent of their... My dad's parents, I get a strong scent of their apartment. They used to live in uh, Strong Street in the Bronx. Okay. And they also had an apartment in Queens, in, in Flossen, Queens. And they both had the same smell, the apartment smell. So when, you know, they pay me a visit, it's always a strong apartment smell. Right. And uh, when my mom's parents passed away... They you always with they had a bay in the backyard, so it used to come in from the ocean. And uh so it used to be like the sweet smell of the ocean. 
So uh, we're in the same boat, but I don't know if he ever gets smells when you, you get a visitor, but I know for everyone it's different. Right. No, I don't get a smell. I get more of just like like that gut feeling kind of feeling. More in, more more or less like intuition. <laughs> no, I agree with you. It, it works different for these people. Right. <laughs> Now going back to your talk show, um, the dating show, have you how many successful stories worked out, and how many stories have things didn't work out? Um, it's definitely not half and half. I can tell you, we probably had more unsuccessful stories, and and I say that because I'm including all the stories that people actually send in that ask advice, you know. My boyfriend cheated on me, should I stay with him? Well, no, you shouldn't. Or my boyfriend or my girlfriend drinks too much and parties too much and I don't. Well, no, that person's probably not for you either then. So, you know, when they send in the stories and asking, they, they kind of answer their own question in some way, but sometimes you just need that third party to tell you. Um, so I would say that there's more unsuccessful stories, but I see more successful stories. Because they're going to take the advice that I gave them, and if they apply it as I said it, then they will have a successful relationship story. So it'll get there. <laughs> now let's um, turn that directory back. It's say someone for me who has a warning disability. Do you believe that there's someone out there for me, or do you think that? It would be very difficult to find someone for me. Not very difficult at all. Now, it probably what I what I always tell people is there's somebody out there for everyone, and you just have to know how to find them. And that's what a lot of people I think are really stumped on. They don't know how to look for love. They're looking for people that are like them, or share their interests, or or share their sensitivity, and they're looking for them in the wrong places. You know, if you're somebody that's not a clubber, that doesn't drink heavily, that's sincere, you know, goes and visits mom and dad on Sundays, you're not going to find somebody like that in a bar or a nightclub. So, for the most part, you just have to know where to look, is what it comes down to. And that's something that, you know, dating sites can certainly help, even, you know, hiring a matchmaker. That'll help you big time, because they already have their roster of people they can set you up with, rather than you searching around and, and looking through profiles. Not that online dating doesn't work. It's actually worked for me. But a lot of people, you know, you, you also have to navigate. You also know how to sort of brand yourself, you know, to, before you can even look for the person that's right for you. You have to know who you are. That's true. And while on the subject, do you, have you ever found any fakers out there, people who pretended to be this person but really wasn't that person? Has that ever happened to you? In the dating world, or, or guests? Well, um, both. Let's start online, especially okay. online. Right. Well, guests, no. I, I never fake guests on the show, but certainly I've dated people that they weren't what I was expecting. You know, they, that you run into that too. I like to look at dating as auditions. I always say, you know, to, I always tell women especially, especially in the new year, and, and they're trying to either lose weight and, and whatever, and they want to meet the one. Um, recently I gave advice that was, you know, treat dating like auditions, you know, go out on as many as possible and, you know, you don't have to give them a call back if you don't want to. It's, you know, you go out and, and either you have coffee or, or a quick dinner and you just exchange thoughts back and forth. I mean, you usually know right then and there if there's going to be a second date or not. You know, your gut feeling will tell you that. So sometimes you just have to go with it. All right, well, wrapping up, do you have any funny uh, stories, any more funny stories that you want to share, or do you have anything you want to say to your fans and listeners out there? Well, I, I don't really have any other funny, funny stories I can think of off the top of my head. They, they usually come up in, like, you know, wine conversation, but uh, I certainly want to thank everybody that supports me in, in all social media, on television, just my entire fan base. I mean, I... I truly appreciate each and every one, and I sincerely mean that because it's not an easy road to travel down, and a lot of people don't make it, and a lot of people give up, and even though, you know, I'm not going to lie, I have those feelings sometimes, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. I just, I always tell people also, you have to feel your emotions. Don't bottle them or deny them. 
totally go through the motions of feeling them, and then when you're done having your moment, get right back in the game and do what you got to do. So that's what I do. When I have my, my negative moment, I have it, and then I get focused again. So I just want to thank everybody for standing by me and continuing to stand by me.